Uh, good afternoon, uh, students of uh, 20th century Irish history. Um, on the 15th of uh, the month of, uh, of April. Um, before I begin my coverage of uh, De Valera and Fianna Fáil in Power 32 to 48, uh, and then the sequel, uh, that is to say the uh, uh, coalition government and the new Fianna Fáil of the uh, 1950s, uh, and, uh, and uh, 60s. <clears throat> uh, just a reminder, first of all, there uh, is an assignment, a watered-down assignment, uh, for the April 6th, April 14th period, um, and it centers around uh, just a relatively few pages in Ernie O'Malley's uh, On Another Man's Wound. That's available uh, online for up to 14 days. I gave you the uh, uh, information about connecting with that online uh, version of, uh, of On Another Man's Wound uh, in my uh, uh, email uh, of, uh, uh, of a few days ago. Uh, let's see, that would be uh, April, <clears throat> April 9th. Um, now, uh, in, and that uh, O'Malley assignment involves uh, looking at and, and uh, uh, reviewing two articles in the packet that I mailed to you, uh, two articles on Ernie O'Malley, McGurn's uh, work, and then... Uh, uh, a short piece, The Poet of the Rising, which appeared in the uh, Irish Voice of April 9th, 19, uh, 2013. Now today, we're going to be covering the 32 to uh, 66 period. Uh, you're to produce a, uh, a detailed two-page outline of Gibney, 212, 225. Make it detailed and carefully uh, structured and written. Uh, Gibney's available online and uh, uh, also produce a 1.5 summary of my lecture. Okay, so take notes and produce a 1.5 summary of what I've covered. And then produce a, uh, a, a detailed, thoughtful one page outline of the two PowerPoints for the period. Uh, they're online, they're in Sakai, so you can um, get into them and, uh, and see what you can do by way of uh, describing them. Okay, um, I believe that I did send you the outline uh, for um, De Valera and Fina Fallen Power, so I'm going to be following that in my remarks uh, today. <clears throat> Uh, the new government, 1932, Deb takes command of the uh, government of the Irish Free State. Many people thought that uh, de Valera uh, would establish a dictatorship uh, in the Irish Free State, maybe a communist-type dictatorship. In fact, he introduced a government based on a democratic uh, and conservative constitution, 1922 constitution. Uh, he ran the government and the country by the same means and often with the same personnel as had uh, William Cosgrave and his uh, Kuman Nagel associates. Now, De Valera uh, will, begins his uh, uh, executive career uh, in the uh, Free State. He's elected president of the Executive Council of the Irish Free State on March 9, 1932, um, by a vote of the Doyle 81 to 68, uh, he's able to become uh, the uh, president of the Irish Free State because he has a handful of Labour Party votes. Uh, 
that put him over the top, okay? Uh, his cabinet. Uh, he not only, uh, you know, is, is elected president of the executive council, he also uh, becomes Mex minister for external affairs, in other words, kind of secretary of state. His, uh, ca uh, ca the rest of his cabinet included Sean O'Kelly, uh, local government and public health, uh, Sean McEntee out of Belf uh, Belfast, minister of finance, Thomas Derrig, uh, out of Mayo, Minister of Education. Sean Lamas, get that name down. Sean Lamas, good French name. Uh, Industry and Commerce. He's going to serve uh, De Valera very well uh, in the uh, 1930s uh, into the late 1940s. Uh, and... Uh, uh, at the end of the 1950s, he's going to succeed uh, De Valera as the Tissac or the uh, Prime Minister of uh, what was uh, by the uh, <clears throat> by uh, the late you know by 1948 the Irish Republic. Uh, Frank Der uh, uh, Aiken was Minister of Defense. Remember, he was head of the IRA when uh, uh, he and Dev. Uh, uh, orchestrated the uh, uh, the end of fighting in the uh, Civil War. Jim Ryan, James Ryan, Minister for Agriculture. Um, Dev uh, hits the ground running in 1932, April 20th. Uh, he uh, introduces a bill to abolish the oath uh, of allegiance that had been so uh, controversial uh, uh, is part of the treaty and was in the uh, uh, 1922 uh, Constitution. Uh, De Valera argued that the oath was a purely domestic matter and uh, removing it was justified by the authority that the Statute of Westminster gave to the Dominions, including uh, Ireland. Um, the uh, <clears throat> Legislation was approved in May of 1932, uh, and uh, 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 when, when the legislative process was uh, uh, completed, Article 17 of the treaty, uh, which was uh, moved into the uh, Constitution of 1922, was removed uh, from the statute books. Uh, De Valera then uh, uh, set his sights on uh, uh, not necessarily removing the position of Governor General, but uh, uh, making it even less uh, significant. Uh, the Governor General was James McNeil. Uh, he was a uh, uh, he he served in the uh, in the Indian government of the crown. Uh, he was a Catholic, um, and uh, uh, as a Catholic, of course, he was interested in uh, a great celebration that occurred in uh, Ireland, in Dublin especially, in June of 1932. There was an international uh, uh, Eucharistic Congress. Uh, the Catholics of Ireland uh, celebrating uh, the arrival 1,500 years previously of, uh, of Patrick uh, to uh, evangelize uh, uh, Ireland. Uh, uh, now, at the Eucharistic Congress, uh, de Valera's uh, ministers and uh, members of the government uh, were told to snub the uh, Governor General, if he showed up at, uh, uh, at, 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 at events associated with the Eucharistic Congress. Um, and, and by snubbing, I mean, you know, they'd uh, ignore him and, uh, and sometimes walk out. Uh, November 1st, De Valera's uh, uh, prevails on uh, McNeil to uh, be re removed 
En die verleden is Damnol O Bukela. O Bukela, Buckley. Uh, who's little more than a kind of merchant, grocer, uh, to take up the position uh, of uh, uh, Governor General. Uh, and he's under orders from Deb to take no part in public uh, life. Lives in uh, modest uh, housing. Uh, and uh, he's virtually invisible. Uh, the post of Governor General, by the way, would not be formally abolished uh, until 1937, uh, and its abolition by the government of uh, D.V. Lyra uh, and Fina Fall uh, was... Uh, uh, occurred during the fallout from the abdication of King Edward VIII. Uh, De Valera took, took uh, uh, advantage of the upset uh, uh, within the Crown government of, uh, of uh, the uh, fairly new uh, reigning King Edward VIII to step down uh, to be with uh, the woman he loved, uh, Wallace uh, Simpson. Uh, the uh, what else does De Valera do in a constitutional way? Uh, well, he takes uh, you know he targets the Senate uh, under the uh, came out of the. Uh, 1922 uh, Constitution, uh, dominated by uh, Kumar Nagel and former Unionists. Uh, uh, and uh, while the Senate can only um, hold up for a time uh, legislation passed by the Doyle, it's nevertheless uh, a real irritant to, to uh, De Valera. Um, and in 1936, uh, legislation uh, was uh, passed by the Doyle uh, abolishing uh, the Senate. Um, what else is it? So, so there's a, a kind of con assault by the de Valera government on the kind of those elements in the Irish uh, Free State Constitution uh, that. Uh, uh, connected uh, the Free State uh, uh, to uh, the uh, United Kingdom. Something else. Um, let's look at economic policy in the Economic War of 1932-1938. Now, the keynote of Fan of Falls economic policy was the ideal of national self-sufficiency, economic self-sufficiency. Uh, um, uh, remember, the, the, these ideas would, were formulated in the late 19th, early 20th century by uh, Arthur Griffith. Shin under the uh, umbrella, uh, under the title of Sinn Féin. Now, how was that uh, self-sufficiency, national self-sufficiency, economic self-sufficiency to be achieved? It was to be achieved by an, uh, means of industrial expansion. Uh, the uh, uh, program was devised by Sean Lamas. Uh, that is to say, uh, the government took an active role in setting up factories in Ireland. Uh, the idea was to make uh, uh, the Irish people less dependent on imports uh, from Britain in particular. Uh, uh, 1933, an industrial credit corporation uh, uh, provided uh, financing for these uh, uh, factories. Uh, uh, then there was the uh, question of Irish agriculture, which was in, in the eyes of uh, De Valera and Fianna Fáil, in dire need of stimulation. 1931, there are maybe 12 million uh, acres uh, uh, of agricultural land, 12% uh, 
uh, devoted to tillage or the raising of crops, 20% to hay, uh, and 68% to, to pasturage, to the grazing of livestock. Uh, there were, uh, were also in 31, 45,000 farms of under uh, one acre, which the Irish uh, jokingly referred to as uh, toy farms. Um, the uh, aim of Fianna Fall was to do this in agriculture. First of all, uh, raise up the uh, uh, percentage uh, of agriculture devoted to raising crops, uh, weaken the rancher class, in other words, break up uh, these overly large uh, ranches or estates, uh, in other words, divide up the big, uh, big farms especially, uh, uh, expand the land commission, uh, improve technical advice, educational facilities uh, uh, directed towards the uh, agricultural sector, uh, introduce uh, modern uh, marketing regulations, uh, also uh, follow a policy of, uh, of a protection, protection uh, uh, protecting Irish uh, uh, agriculture, uh, Irish goods generally produced in Ireland. Uh. And then there was the matter of the land annuities. Mark this down, uh, the land annuities. Uh, um, if we could, uh, before that, uh, we look at the land annuities. Uh, uh, your <clears throat> um, uh, PowerPoint will, will uh, initiate first frame. Uh, you'll see uh, De Valera and his cabinet. Uh, the uh, second frame, uh, the second frame will show Sean Lamas, uh, who's uh, in charge of the industrialization program. And then an adversary uh, of De Valera who drives De Valera bats uh, the colonial minister in the uh, uh, British government, James uh, Thomas. Okay, uh, keep that in mind. Uh, his his name in mind. Land annuities. They're repayments for original loans advanced by the British government to enable uh, tenant farmers to purchase their holdings under the Land Acts. Now the Cosgrave government agreed to collect and pay directly to the British government uh, the land annuities, in other words the mortgage payments, uh, from uh, tenant uh, purchases in several agreements, 1923 and 1926. David Lara decided to retain uh, the land annuities um, uh, on the grounds that the agreements were never ratified by Doyle Aaron uh, and so on July 1st uh, the government uh, the De Valera government withheld the uh, payments uh, uh, due uh, on uh, that were due on, on July 1st um, 32 uh, it didn't, in other words, forward those payments uh, to the British government. Britain uh, retaliated. There was an imposition of uh, 20 percent uh, duties on the selling value of all Irish cattle uh, and agricultural exports, uh, and the Free State responded uh, by uh, putting a 5 percent duty on English imports. So the economic war uh, is on. It's uh, in one respect uh, disastrous uh, for Ireland. Uh, it uh, over its uh, existence, 1932 to uh, 38, um, uh, cattle exports uh, went uh, down precipitously. Agricultural exports in value 
uh, diminished uh, considerably. Uh, 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 it uh, brought about a kind of uh, depression in the, uh, in, the in, in the agricultural sector. Nearly destroyed the cattle industry. Uh, reduced uh, farmers' incomes. Uh, it uh, sparked an increase in immigration, increase in unemployment, drop in wages of agricultural uh, laborers. That being said, it doesn't seem to have adversely uh, affected uh, De Valera. Through, through it all, uh, De Valera and the Finefall remain in power. Now, was the economic war uh, uh, settled? Yes, it was. Negotiation between De Valera and uh, the uh, British government in March uh, of uh, early uh, 18, 1938. Uh, by March of 38, there was an Anglo-Irish agreement. Uh, in lieu of, uh, in final settlement of the uh, payments uh, that de Valera's government had not sent to Britain, uh, the Irish government uh, agreed to pay a 10 million pound one-time payment. Uh, so the, uh, the uh, Land annuities question was dead. Uh, that also, that Anglo-Irish agreement also, I might note, and we'll come back to it, <clears throat> uh, put an end to the, uh, mutually, to uh, special duties. In other words, the economic uh, war uh, was ended. Uh, and then finally, and this is very significant, uh, the ports that had been, uh, uh, you know, offered access to uh, British uh, naval uh, vessels, uh, garrisons, uh, the three ports, uh, they were evacuated uh, <clears throat> in, uh, by virtue of the agreement. The evacuation of the ports, uh, which reports Bearhaven, uh, uh, Cove, uh, uh, Loch Swilly, uh, that uh, evacuation was a factor that a key factor in enabling the free uh, the the uh, de Valera government to declare uh, under emergency legislation 1939 Irish neutrality. Keep that in mind. Uh, something else that should be mentioned uh, in our look at the uh, de Valera government in its uh, in the 30s. Uh, de Valera set. Uh, 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 political prisoners free, uh, suspended the Public uh, Safety Act of 1931 uh, in March of 32. Uh, that meant the release of IRA prisoners. Well, they no sooner got out of jail than these prisoners began a campaign of unrelenting, unrelenting hostility against the opposition party. Cosgrave and Commander Gale uh, under the headline of No Free Speech for Traitors. Uh, they got physical. Um, February of 1933, the IRA set forth a program of full-blooded uh, republicanism. Uh, they declared that they were uh, going to further and occur uh, uh, secure a full-blooded uh, Republic. Uh, the program also stated that a united island was a major goal. In other words, the end of uh, uh, the six counties as part of the United Kingdom. Uh, they wanted uh, <coughs> British armed forces uh, uh, eliminated uh, from any place in the uh, free state. Uh, they also committed themselves to the use of force, if need be. The IRA leaders, Peter O'Donnell, uh, uh, Frank Ryan, uh, Mo Toomey, uh, the Gilmore brothers, uh, Sean McBride, uh, uh, Price. Um, now, in response to the uh, 
uh, release of the IRA uh, prisoners, uh, and their uh, vigorous, their aggressive, their activism, uh, there did develop a counter movement. It began with a veterans organization, veterans of the old IRA, the Army Comrades Association, formed in uh, early 1932, uh, and reorganized uh, uh, under the, in, in August of 32 uh, uh, under the leadership of uh, Thomas O'Higgins, brother of the assassinated Kevin O'Higgins, uh, and uh, the reorganized ACA, Army Comrades Association, began to serve as a defense force for Kuman de Gale, uh, uh, politics, at, uh, meetings, assemblies, uh, against uh, bully boys from the IRA. Uh, the uh, things were really heating up between the two factions, ACA and uh, the IRA. Uh, Civil War seemed to be about to uh, recom uh, recommence. Um, nevertheless, uh, De Valera in January of, uh, of 1933 calls a general election it was an overall victory of Fianna Fáil. The uh, uh, De Valera's government no longer dependent on Labour Party votes. Uh, emboldened, uh, De Valera in February of 1933 uh, dismissed uh, uh, General O'Duffy as commissioner head of the Civic Guards of the National Police Force. Uh, and in July of 1933, uh, uh, O'Duffy uh, began the uh, um, took on the leadership position of the reformed uh, ACA Comrades Association, now style themselves National Guard. Uh, they wore uniforms, blue shirts. Uh, they sought a corporate state, you know, in the Italian model. Uh, um, uh, were they fascist? There was some fascistic uh, elements, uh, you know, salutes and marches and uh, colored shirts. But the a the National Guard was clearly less ruthless or militaristic than continental fascists. Now, O'Duffy uh, scheduled a National Guard march in August of uh, 1933. Uh, the government, uh, the Lauren government banned uh, the march, revived, revived provisions of the Public Safety Act, 1931. O'Duffy uh, peacefully called off the parade. Uh, and then uh, over time, the National Guard was uh, re re uh, formulated, renamed the Young Ireland, and then finally, uh, several years later, the League of Youth, uh, uh, and uh, along the way, as we're going to uh, note, uh, O'Duffy, uh, head of the National Guard, would uh, for a time be head of Fine Gael, the reformed, reorganized Kuman de Gael. We haven't gotten to that yet. Uh, but the Blue Shirts, uh, ben be, began to disintegrate uh, uh, by mid-1934. Uh, uh, Fine Gael uh, lost uh, uh, local uh, elections, uh, uh, and O'Duffy really wasn't cut out to be a, a, a true democratic uh, a political leader he urged farmers uh, not to pay their uh, to uh, their land annuities to the government, uh, and uh, when uh, uh, O'Duffy, who had a, uh, uh, a strained relationship when he assumed the leadership of Fine Gael, uh, that relationship uh, really. Uh, uh, led to his being forced out of the leadership position and in 
and it returned to uh, Cosgrave. Uh, I should point out there's an epilogue in the uh, political uh, militaristic life of uh, uh, Owen O'Duffy uh, when the Spanish uh, Civil War broke out uh, in 1936. Uh, 700 blue shirts under O'Duffy went off to Spain and fought on the nationalist uh, Franco side. Uh, I think it's fair to say that O'Duffy lacked uh, the personal popularity of uh, de Valera. Uh, uh, let's see. Here we have uh, uh, in a frame, uh, uh, the next frame, the uh, uh, a picture of a portrait of O'Duffy in uniform, and then the uh, blue shirts uh, uh, marching. Uh, the uh, um, okay now, uh, but before we talk about political reformulation taking place. After the fall of the Blue Shirts, uh, under pressure from the New Valera government, the IRA <laughs> fell increasingly out of favor uh, with uh, De Valera's government. There were internal divisions there, socialist Republicans versus traditional Republicans. There, was, uh, there were several cold-blooded killings uh, within the IRA or taken, you know, uh, committed by IRA members, 1935 and 36. 1936, De Valera declared the IRA uh, an illegal organization. Uh, so that's, uh, that was showing that uh, De Valera was committed to democratic, peaceful, uh, um, a peaceful uh, government uh, for the Irish uh, Free State, uh, and he was willing to come down uh, increasingly hard, not only on the uh, the far right uh, uh, blue shirts, but uh, on those who had supported him, uh, the uh, IRA. Now, what about uh, uh, the Cosgrave Party? Um, well, it is renamed and reorganized in 1933 uh, under a new name. Uh, remember, the original name of the Cosgrave Party, Commander Gale. Uh, in October of 1932, there was a, a third party entitled the uh, Irish uh, Centre Party. Uh, the leaders were uh, James uh, Dillon uh, and uh, Frank uh, McDermott, showing on a uh, PowerPoint uh, uh, frame. Uh, the Center Party was devoted to uh, promoting the interest of large farmers. Uh, it committed itself to the end of partition, uh, in other words, uni unity of Ireland, but by peaceful means. Uh, and it was also committed to friendly relations between, uh, uh, you know, uh, currently, uh, between uh, Great Britain uh, and Northern Ireland. Now, in uh, 1933, the Centre Party merged with Kumanda Gale uh, to form the, uh, in English, the United Ireland Party, or Fine Gael, Fine Gael. Um, and it becomes, uh, it remains the second major uh, uh, Irish party right to this day. The first two, of course, uh, are the first uh, major party, uh, Fine Fall, uh, and uh, now, uh, and 33, Fine Gael. Now, what it was the platform of Fine Gael? Uh, commitment to securing a 32 Irish, uh, 32 county Ireland uh, as a member of the British Commonwealth. 
uh, it was committed to economic and agricultural corporations, uh, um, uh, to abolition of proportional representation uh, as a way of electing uh, the members of the uh, uh, Doyle Aaron and the Senate. Uh, it was especially committed to ending the economic war. Uh, now, at the time of uh, uh, the uh, consolidation of Kumanagail and uh, 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 the Irish Centre Party to form Fine Gael, uh, O'Duffy Oda Oda uh, was head of uh, Fine. Uh, of, of, uh, he, be, he remains head of uh, Fine Gael, but he resigns in September of uh, uh, 1934. Cosgrave returns as leader. Uh, the uh, renamed, uh, reorganized uh, party, Fine Gael, uh, frankly didn't, uh, you know, uh, do very well. Uh, in either the uh, general election of 1937, they gained only 48 seats to Fina Falls 69 seats. Uh, and in 1938, in the wake of the Anglo-Irish Agreement of uh, 1938, a general election produced a, a miserly 45 TDs, uh, uh, deputies uh, uh, in the Doyle for... Uh, uh, Fine Gael. Now, that 38 general election is going to be fought under the uh, 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 new constitution. So let's look at the uh, uh, 1937 uh, constitution. Uh, uh, the uh, uh, Irish constitution of 1922. Uh, its official name, Constitution of the Irish Free State, Sostat Aran uh, Act. Uh, as we've shown from 1930 on, De Valera's, uh, through a series of uh, amendments, is amending that 1922 Constitution. Uh, and <clears throat> De Valera takes advantage of the uh, uh, abdication of King Edward VIII, 1936, he's shown here in uh, uniform, uh, to uh, delete all references to the king and governor general, uh, uh, deleted from the Constitution, uh, and uh, <clears throat> there, uh, uh, in, in the meantime, what De Valera was doing was uh, crafting, in a real hands-on uh, way by him, uh, crafting a new constitution, uh, the 1937 constitution, replaces the 1922 constitution, uh, and it's still the constitution of the uh, Irish Republic uh, today, uh, much amended actually. Uh, <clears throat> the uh, <clears throat> Uh, 1937 Constitution, the Irish name for it, Bungarak na Erin, the uh, <clears throat> Constitution of Ireland. It's enacted uh, on July 1st, 1937. It goes into effect in force on the 29th of December, 1937. Uh, let's uh, very uh, quickly uh, sum up. Uh, what's different about the 1937 Constitution. There's no reference to do, in it to dominion status. Uh, the name of the uh, uh, 26th County Irish State is no longer the Irish Free State, it's called ERA, ERA or Ireland in English. Uh, the preamble uh, uh, asserts uh, uh, that the uh, state uh, uh, is uh, vested, uh, you know, under the, under the authority of God to uh, uh, in the people of Ireland. Uh, the articles summarize very succinctly. Uh, article one of that constitution proclaims self-government. Uh, article two. <clears throat> 
uh, declares that the national territory is all of Ireland. Uh, uh, but how could the Constitution apply to Northern Ireland? <coughs> uh, <coughs> Article 3 uh, resolves that, uh, <coughs> uh, in effect, uh, <coughs> saying that laws uh, uh, that are passed uh, by the legislature <coughs> uh, of uh, ERA uh, will, will in time, in, in a future time of uh, an end to partition, apply to Northern Ireland. Uh, the name change, of course, ERA, you know, Free State, Irish Free State, to ERA Island. <coughs> Article 5. Uh, declares that Ireland is a sovereign, independent, democratic state. Uh, Article 5 uh, uh, declares in, in more wordy form that powers are uh, derived under God from the people, that the powers uh, are exercisable by state organizations established under the Constitution. And here's a real change. <coughs> Uh, in, uh, that uh, is found in the 37 Constitution. Article 12 uh, sets up uh, um, uh, a dual leadership. Uh, there is uh, established a president's position, but it's more or less ceremonial, uh, and it will be uh, occupied <coughs> Uh, at first uh, by a, an Irish Protestant, the great uh, scholar of the Irish language, uh, uh, Douglas Hyde, May 4th, 1938, he's installed. Uh, but the real authority under the 37th Constitution is vested in the TSOC, it's called TSOC. Um, uh, and in Article 15, the <coughs> lawmaking uh, power uh, that the uh, TSOC will be uh, carrying, carrying out uh, uh, is vested in the uh, Ariactus uh, or Parliament, uh, which interestingly enough continues to be a dual uh, legislature, Doyle Aaron and Senate Aaron. Um, and we see uh, also in the Constitution the influence of uh, papal encyclicals, uh, particularly coming from uh, Pius uh, XI. Uh, and uh, we would also note the, uh, and it's in your, uh, um, uh, in the Gibney book, I, I do hope you pick it up and as you're putting your, uh, 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 outlines together um, the uh, where are we uh, the uh, Constitution um, the uh, uh, influence of Catholic on page uh, 213 in Gibney influence of Catholic social teachings Infuse the document, uh, the uh, uh, social thought, Catholic social thought, seen in the articles relating to education, private property, social policy, among other things. Uh, the Constitution, this is page 214, um, um, Emphasize the uh, family unit and pro prohibited divorce, certainly on uh, uh, in line with Catholic doctrine and uh, um, uh, and and interest interestingly enough, uh, the uh, Constitution uh, it. Uh, uh, recognized uh, the uh, the the 
uh, Catholic religion as the, re not the state religion, but as the religion of the majority of Irish. Yeah. But also, in the same articles, the Constitution gave formal recognition to a host of Protestant denominations uh, and uh, official recognition to Judaism. That's very liberal. Because uh, think uh, about you know, 1936, 37, what was happening to Judaism on the continent? It was under siege, not so in uh, Ireland, okay? The uh, um, uh, let's go on to uh, uh, note that the Constitution has no direct reference to Ireland as a republic. Uh, and in my own doctoral uh, dissertation, I refer to uh, 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 the uh, era or state of Ireland as a, uh, a, a uh, constitutionally the un uh, kind of uh, unproclaimed uh, Irish uh, Republic. Uh, indeed, the uh, uh, arrangements of the uh, uh, in the Irish Constitution, state arrangements uh, would be uh, emulated, uh, be a model for India, Pakistan, and Burma uh, when after World War II uh, they left uh, uh, the uh, uh, British uh, British control. They ceased to be part of the British Empire. Now let's look at Ireland and the Second World War. War broke out September of 1939. Uh, the Doyle and the Senate quickly approved an emergency powers bill. Uh, so we speak of 1935 to 1939. 1939 to 1945 uh, as the era, the time of the emergency. Now, the emergency gave the uh, legislation, gave the Irish government almost dictatorial powers to secure public safety, preservation. Uh, and on the same day uh, that the Doyle approved the emergency powers bill, De Valera, in a radio broadcast, uh, announced that neutrality would be uh, the official policy of, uh, of the uh, of era. And it should be noted that uh, neutrality was made feasible by the 1938 Anglo-Irish uh, Agreement. Uh, but. Uh, even before that uh, agreement with Britain uh, that uh, provided for the evacuation uh, of the ports by the British uh, military, uh, de Valera had already in his own way uh, uh, forecast that if war would come, uh, Ireland would not be uh, a, uh, a belligerent. Ireland would be neutral. He made such a statement to that effect in the wake of the uh, failure of the League of Nations to protect uh, Abyssinia or Ethiopia, uh, in the wake of the uh, um, Italian, uh, a, you know, in invasion of Ethiopia, um, and, and, and there were all the uh, indications. Uh, uh, the the Italian uh, the uh, the uh, Irish state and de Valera didn't get uh, directly involved in the uh, Spanish Civil War. Now, when neutrality was announced, uh, the principal opposition came from the men uh, who, uh, by 1940, would be uh, the prime minister of the United Kingdom, uh, Winston Churchill. He was furious. Uh, he stated uh, in no uncertain terms that German U-boats might operate from Ireland. Uh, he stated that neutrality was illegal. But interestingly enough, 
the British cabinet didn't, uh, in, you know, support uh, the the uh, uh, United Kingdom forcing uh, the Irish uh, uh, government to abandon neutrality. The K Dev's uh, rather uh, Churchill's cabinet didn't support uh, the. Uh, coming down hard on the De Valera state. Why? They were afraid of American uh, disapproval. Remember, America didn't get into the war on uh, Britain's side until uh, the, you know, the aftermath of uh, uh, Pearl Harbor. Uh, and uh, also the British cabinet feared losing the goodwill of the Irish people. Um, and it should be noted that it was generally accepted on both sides of the Irish Sea uh, that neutrality would be benevolent uh, towards uh, Great Britain. Uh, the uh, government took steps to implement uh, neutrality. Uh, a, uh, let's see what we've got here is the Irish cost, uh, the frame, the new constitution I, uh, I have in the PowerPoint. Uh, article 44.12 uh, and Article 44.1.3 uh, that will summarize the uh, status of the Catholic Church and the status of, uh, of the Protestant denominations uh, uh, as uh, well as uh, uh, Judaism. Uh, now, uh, what should we say? Uh, the government uh, took steps to implement a neutrality. Uh, 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 here's, oh, here's a frame that shows Malcolm MacDonald, whom Dev uh, uh, negotiated with in the Anglo-Irish Agreements uh, of uh, 1938. Uh, it shows the evacuation of uh, Cobe uh, by the British. Uh, uh, We've got uh, a picture of uh, Dev at Victoria Station preparing to travel to Geneva. He was, uh, Dev's and, and, and the Irish government throughout the 30s were very active in the League of Nations uh, at Geneva. Uh, frame showing the uh, League of Nations uh, leadership uh, convening. Uh, uh, you uh, have uh, uh, a picture of uh, uh, Frank uh, Ryan <coughs> addressing a public meeting in 1932. <coughs> he led the smaller uh, contingent of men who fought for the Irish Republic. Uh, I might note he's a cousin uh, of uh, uh, our fine retired uh, uh, um, a judge here in the state of Rhode Island, Francis Darrigan, a great uh, patron of Irish studies at Providence College, uh, graduate of the uh, class of 1964, president of the class of 1964, ergo 64 Hall. That's his cousin, Frank Ryan. Uh, uh, during the war, okay, uh, <clears throat> the uh, um, we have, uh, what else here, uh, a government taking steps again to implement neutrality, a Department of Supplies uh, was uh, headed up by Sean uh, Lamas, uh, it introduced rationing, a uh, considerable black market uh, flourished, not surprisingly, was uh, operative here in this in the U.S. Uh, during uh, 41 through 45. Uh, I think it's fair to say that during the war years, the time of the emergency, the Irish, uh, to a certain extent, led uh, sheltered uh, lives. Um, uh, employment was a problem. The war caused a drop in some uh, industries, uh, but. There's a constant demand for Irish labor in Britain. So many Irish men and women across the Irish Sea and worked in, uh, in defense uh, 
uh, industries in, uh, in Great Britain. Um, the agricultural boom that had existed in uh, the course of World War I didn't, uh, wasn't repeated in, uh, during World War II. There was 1941 a foot and mouth uh, uh, outbreak, uh, a shortage of fertilizers. Uh, uh, so, in sum, the wartime economy was stagnant. Uh, but there was another um, outlet for unemployed people of uh, Erie. Uh, British Armed Services. Uh, by the end of uh, uh, World War II, you've got upwards of what? Uh, maybe 70,000 uh, Irish and British uh, forces. Um, the, uh, uh, and even in Ireland itself, De Valera signaling that uh, he would, uh, uh, the Irish would fight if Ireland were invaded either by the British uh, uh, and their allies uh, or the Germans and their allies. Uh, so De, De Valera increased the regular army to 14,000. That gave a certain amount of employment to the uh, uh, unemployed. Uh, and it did prove that Ireland would defend its uh, independence and neutrality. Also, one uh, should be noted that the uh, government dealt rigorously with the IRA the uh, indeed even before the war began uh, the IRA, IRA, IRA was uh, in the course of 1939 setting off bombs uh, in uh, Britain uh, and a uh, hard-edged uh, June of 39 uh, offenses against the state act uh, would be uh, uh, would would be uh, uh, passed. Uh, it's at the stage uh, after the IRA in, on December 23rd raided the magazine fort in Phoenix Park. Uh, it set the stage for a wholesale internment under emergency powers of uh, IRA. Uh, uh, suspects at the Curra, uh and uh, uh, the there was a certain amount of sympathy in in, in IRA circles uh, with the Nazi Germany, not because necessarily the IRA uh, approved of everything that the Nazis were doing, but because the Nazis were fighting Britain. Um, so, what about wartime uh, relations? Uh, uh, with uh, Germany. Uh, there was an Irish, uh, a German legation or ministry in Dublin. Uh, the minister was Edward Hempel. Uh, he was rather scrupulous in not getting involved in Irish domestic politics. There's no evidence that the Dublin legation served as a spy center. Uh, in fact, uh, Hempel was regarded, uh, uh, he, he uh, clearly kept uh, the, the legation uh, uh, free of any uh, contacts with the IRA. Um, and in a, in a controversial action, May 2nd, 1945, uh, as uh, the day of uh, destiny uh, uh, came, May 7th, May 8th, the end of World War II uh, in the European theater, <clears throat> the defeat of Nazi Germany, uh, De Valera, uh, having received word of the uh, death of uh, Hitler, paid a uh, ceremonial visit to the German legation, and it, 
He saw it as simply domestic, you know, something formally required uh, to to emphasize the neutrality uh, of uh, the Irish uh, state, uh, and he. Uh, um, 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 also kind of personally uh, thanked Hempel for not having uh, violated Irish neutrality. Now, what was happening during the war years in relations between Britain and, uh, and the evil Irish state? <clears throat> well, the uh, UK re representative in Ireland, <clears throat> in Dublin, was Sir John Maffey. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, and there were friendly uh, diplomatic relations between Britain and Ireland. <laughs> Maffey did uh, uh, present a certain, is Maffey, uh, certain proposals uh, from the Churchill government regarding partition <clears throat> to the Irish government, June of 1940. Uh, the British stated that if Ireland ended the war on Britain's side, <clears throat> Britain would agree to uh, vaguely to Irish unity after the war. Uh, De Valera turned the plan, uh, plane down. Uh, he didn't think uh, that the promise had many, uh, uh, any, many uh, vitality in it, and also uh, he didn't want to risk uh, Ireland, <clears throat> but to spare Ireland uh, from the depredations of the war. Uh, that uh, would follow uh, Ireland uh, joining the Allied uh, forces against uh, the Nazis. Uh, <clears throat> now, what else was happening during the war? During the war, there was censorship. <clears throat> Irish newspapers were censored rigidly under the uh, supervision of <clears throat> Frank Aiken, the Minister for the Coordination of Defensive Men Measures. The Irish people uh, <clears throat> eagerly listened, uh, uh, however, to radio war news, as people were doing so throughout the uh, <clears throat> European world. They even listened to William Joyce, a man of uh, Irish Protestant background, uh, Lord Hawhor, as he was known. He was actually, uh, you know, pro-Nazi. Uh, and he was executed by the British after the war. Uh, March of 41, the Irish Shipping Corporation under John Layden, Secretary of the Department of Supplies, uh, in its first year bought eight vessels and chartered five others. Uh, these vessels were uh, secured to bring in supplies from the U.S. By the end of the war, uh, the uh, <coughs> Irish shipping had 15 ships. It carried over 1 million tons of, uh, of cargo. And what about relations uh, with the uh, United States? Uh, even after the U.S. Uh, entered the war in December of 1941, uh, 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 De Valera maintained neutrality. Uh, and there was some bad blood between the American uh, uh, minister to Ireland, David Gray, uh, and, uh, uh, and uh, De Valera. Uh, there's uh, Dev with Frank Aiken. Okay. Uh, Gray wrote, wrote a memoir, a Yankee in De Valera's Island. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, that was, that was misunderstandings were especially notable after American troops landed in Northern Ireland before D and where they were training and organizing before D-Day. De Valera filed a formal protest against that. Um, uh, be that as it may, there it's no there's no question but that. Uh, there were contacts between the British uh, and the Irish uh, military uh, for formal uh, cooperation should uh, Ireland be invaded uh, by the Nazis. Uh, so it's 
And, and if uh, British uh, flyers went down, for example, in Ireland, they would be uh, hastily uh, shipped over the border and allowed to join their uh, British units. Uh, whereas uh, Na Nazi, uh, for example, uh, airmen who went down over Ireland, uh, they would be interned uh, until war's end. Uh, now, there was an exchange at war's end between uh, uh, Churchill had been festering all through the uh, war years against de Valera. Uh, May 13th, uh, Churchill, uh, 45, gave a victory spe speech, uh, and he ironically uh, uh, commended the Irish uh, for not uh, uh, taking advantage of... Uh, of Britain's plight. Uh, and uh, a few days later, May 13th, uh, May 17th, May 17th, De Valera gave a measured, uh, a dignified reply. He thanked the British for not doing what they had in the past in uh, uh, invading Ireland and uh, dominating and crucifying Ireland. Uh, but nothing that de Valera said could bridge the gap between Northern Ireland uh, and ERA. The Unionists of the North were more dependent on Britain after the war. Uh, Nationalist Ireland's uh, isolation intensified. <clears throat> the war years uh, brought some uh, dissatisfaction uh, with uh, de Valera's uh, government. Uh, general election in 43 during the war saw so Fianna Fáil lose 10 seats. General election though in 44 the uh, uh, Fianna Gael under General Mulcahy uh, won only 30 seats. Uh, the uh, mantra of, uh, of Fianna Fáil uh, in, in winning that election was you don't change horses in midstream. Um, but the uh, Post-war period was challenging for uh, uh, era. At the end of the war, the cabinet moved extra uh, cautiously in lifting emergency restrictions. Uh, press, postal, telegraph, telephone censorship was uh, eventually discontinued. Uh, John Layden took the lead in arranging for some Irish contribution to Europe, but there were notable post-war so uh, shortages. Uh, because Ireland was at the, at the bottom of the list for supplies of oil, fertilizer, wheat, etc. Uh, industry was uh, uh, almost brought to a standstill in early, in early 1947 by cold weather and fuel shortages. Uh, the Fianna Fáil government was buffeted in other ways. Dr. Connor Ward, a parliamentary secretary, was accused of uh, corruption in connection with the bacon factory he owned. Trade unions were very unhappy. Uh, <clears throat> they hadn't uh, been able to secure uh, wage and working improvements uh, during the war, uh, and so they turned on the government. The first uh, challenge came from the National uh, t t School Teachers Union, the INTO. Uh, the school teachers went on strike between March and October of 1946. The strike was centered in Dublin, uh, teachers uh, uh, claimed uh, to uh, the right to strike would be uh, uh, and, and was based on the failure of pay to keep pace with increased costs of living. Uh, Thomas Derrick, the Minister for Education, replied that teachers were public servants and as such should not strike. Interestingly enough, Archbishop McQuaid of Dublin sided with the teachers and uh, there was a certain bad blood uh, uh, that would last uh, between the Archbishop and the uh, TSOC. Uh, I should note the, Republi the uh, publication of a report of a commission on voc vocational organization chaired by uh, uh, the Bishop of Galway, the Catholic Bishop of Galway, Byrne, uh, Brown. <coughs> It recommended vocational boards for industry and professions. Uh, government bureaucrats didn't like the recommendations. The reports were quietly shelved. Uh, shelved. 
Uh, there was a re publication afterwards of the Social Security Outlines of a Scheme of National Health Insurance, shared by uh, <coughs> Bishop of Clonfort, uh, Dignan, uh, and it marked the first public attack of the Church on State Social Services. Um, the uh, <coughs> new government, though, uh, there were new government directions in social and economic policy that were uh, put together. There were new government departments uh, uh, introduced into the cabinet, uh, Minister for Health and Minister for Social Welfare, December of 46. Uh, <coughs> Uh, and there was a Limited Health uh, Act of 1947. But nevertheless, the seeds were being uh, <coughs> sown for <coughs> the defeat of Fianna Fáil in the 1948 general election. Uh, <coughs> and who were some of the uh, parties to that defeat? Uh, it was a dynamic, a new uh, uh, political party, Clan Publica. Uh, here's uh, Mulcahy, by the way. He was head of, uh, of uh, Fine Gael during the war years. As Archbishop McLeod uh, and uh, De Valera. Uh, let's go on to the next frame. Uh, here's your man. <coughs> The leader of uh, the uh, Clan Republica formed in uh, July of 1946. In other words, the uh, gathering or the clan, uh, the party of the Republic. Uh, its aim was to work for the achievement of Republican, of the Republican ideal by purely political means. The leader was the uh, somewhat exotic uh, Sean uh, McBride. Uh, why is he exotic? Well, when he spoke English, it's a combination of brogue and uh, brogue and uh, Irish and French accent because he'd spent his early years uh, in uh, in France. Uh, he was the son of the uh, beautiful and stunning uh, Republican Protestant convert, Republican activist Maud Gunn. Uh, and uh, John McBride, his father, had been executed as one of the leaders of the uh, uh, Easter Rising. <clears throat> his son initially follows in his father's footsteps. He becomes Irish IRA Chief of Staff in '36, but uh, he, he transitioned to uh, constitutional politics. He accepts the 1937 Constitution. But he would serve as a, an attorney for, men, for a number of his former IRA uh, colleagues. Now, what did uh, Clan Republica want? They wanted repeal of the External Relations Act of 1936, which was the slender thread uh, that still uh, connected the British government to uh, uh, ERA. Uh, they wanted uh, 32 Irish... Uh, County Irish Republic, and they wanted uh, uh, admission of Northern Ireland uh, representatives uh, to the uh, Parliament. Uh, Clan Publica also laid a heavy emphasis on socialism, promised to implement Bishop Dignan's uh, uh, social insurance scheme. The Clan spread quickly, uh, defeated. Uh, uh, Fianna Fáil in two out of three special elections in October of 1947. Uh, and uh, since uh, those defeats, the rise of Clan Republica were ominous in uh, De Valera's eyes. He called a snap election for February 4th, 1948. The uh, election of 1948 uh, is very interesting. Uh, Clan uh, Publica uh, put up uh, uh, more candidates than any other opposition parties. Um, the uh, Clan Publica uh, received 13.2% of the vote with 10 seats in the Doyle. 
their hopes uh, uh, really had not materialized. Uh, Fianna Fossi position uh, to retain the government with 40, almost 42 percent of the vote with 65 uh, seats. Um, uh, and uh, um, the uh, remember that Fine Gael uh, had continued to slip, uh, slip in 37, 38, 43, and 44 elections. Uh, Fine Gael won only 31 uh, seats in the uh, 48 election, but. The common election slogan that brought together all the parties, big and small, uh, against Steve Valera and Fianna Fáil, uh, was put them out, put Fianna Fáil out. And thus, we have Fianna Fáil with 67 seats, offset by 31 Fianna Gael, 14 Labour, 10 uh, Clan Republica, uh, uh, Clan uh, Nantalman, uh, that's a farmer's party, five national labor, 12 independents. And together, they were able to outvote uh, out, uh, uh, FINA fall. And uh, uh, so we have the introduction of the so-called multi-party uh, uh, multi party uh, uh, governments which shared with uh, with uh, Fianna Fáil in the 1950s the uh, governance uh, uh, of uh, the Irish uh, what became in 1950 <clears throat> in, in 1949 the Irish uh, Republic. Now <clears throat> Okay, what I want you to do, uh, I don't have the time to go through uh, pages 118 to uh, 225, but I want you to read carefully uh, what the inter-party government were. Uh, note that uh, John Costello of Fine Gael would be the uh, uh, TSOC uh, for several of those inter-party governments. Um, and that the inter-party government uh, uh, did uh, kowtow to uh, Catholic uh, moral teachings, uh, pay especially uh, to the uh, um, the, the uh, mother and child uh, proposal of uh, Noel Brown and how it was uh, uh, shot down by the Catholic hierarchy uh, and uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, medical profession. Uh, the hierarchy was fearful that it would lead not only to uh, uh, official uh, a contraception, uh, legalized contraception, uh, but even le legalized uh, abortion. Uh, and the uh, inter-party government forced uh, uh, Brown to abandon the uh, legislation. Read also about the uh, continuation uh, into the, through the 1950s of uh, censorship uh, the of, of uh, publications uh, in the cinema uh, and uh, you know the uh, degree to which uh, it was uh, enforced. Um, read also about the 1950s. The economy was deadly soft. Uh, and uh, that uh, was a major factor in the continuing hemorrhaging of young Irish men and women. Um, uh, as um, Gibney uh, writes, uh, 
about the uh, these young Irish uh, men and women on page uh, 221. Young Irish men and women in the 1940s and 50s were quite unwilling to commit to the drudgery uh, that uh, could uh, characterize life on a small farm. The emotionally barren vista painted in Patrick Kavanaugh's poem, The Great Hunger, 1942, reflected a cold reality. Uh, and then uh, McGivney goes to, out to, to point, point that the uh, uh, immigrants uh, who were uh, <clears throat> more apt to go to Britain than to the United States, although there was a significant influx of uh, Irish in the 40s and into the 50s too. Uh, uh, Ireland. Uh, economically, the stage is being set uh, in uh, <clears throat> uh, the course of uh, the late uh, 50s uh, for a radical rejection of the Sinn Féin ideal uh, that uh, had uh, cobbled uh, the uh, hobbled uh, uh, the uh, uh, Irish economy uh, and a, a very real turn uh, into a uh, away from protectionism uh, in uh, into an opening of the Irish economy to global trade uh, uh, that would be uh, to that would set up the uh, economic uh, uh, Improvements, decided improvement in the uh, uh, beginning under Lamas uh, in the uh, uh, late uh, uh, 1950s and early 1960s. Uh, be aware too uh, of uh, uh, in external affairs, Ireland uh, would not join NATO. NATO. It's uh, uh, against the neutral policy of the uh, 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 of uh, era, uh, but they did send. Uh, they joined the uh, United Nations uh, in uh, 1955 and uh, contributed uh, over the years uh, to UN peacekeeping forces. Uh, um, uh, Lamas and Whitaker, the the Whitaker, the. Uh, uh, Architect of uh, uh, the, the the scuttling uh, of uh, of uh, the scuttling of uh, protectionism, uh, they were uh, anxious to, for Ireland to join the uh, European Economic uh, uh, Community. Um, I'll also note uh, as we move into the sixties. Uh, a real revolution occurring in uh, education with free secondary education, uh, widespread rural uh, electrification, improvement of sanitary faculties, uh, uh, the introduction of television with the establishment of uh, radio telephysiron uh, in uh, 62. Uh, and what that would uh, mean for the uh, 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 kind of the beginning of liberalization of Irish life, and then finally note the uh, uh, the impact, uh, the celebration, the, in some respects muted celebration of the fiftieth anniversary of the uh, Easter Rising uh, in nineteen sixty six, uh, and. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, the changing uh, styles and preferences, especially of young people, uh, from um, you know into uh, away from the show bands, uh, uh, giving uh, way to slicker and hairier representatives of beat culture and the folk in the folk revival, uh, uh, as uh, the uh, '60s uh, morphed into the '70s. One final point, one final point, uh, which I did not uh, notice uh, or give notice to, very important. Uh, <clears throat> under the influence of Clanda Publica, 
the Minister for uh, External Affairs, uh, Sean McBride. Uh, Ireland uh, declared in legislation uh, the, that Ireland was no longer the era Ireland, uh, uh, the Irish Republican Committee uh, 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 Kingdom, but it rather was simply uh, the Republic. Uh, the legislation uh, uh, under uh, the direction of John Costello uh, declared uh, Ireland a Republic and it uh, was officially proclaimed in 1949 on the anniversary of the Easter Rising. British responded with the Ireland Act of 1949. You should know that. Because the British said that the status of Northern Ireland would remain unchanged until such times as the Parliament of Northern Ireland would divide, uh, de uh, decide otherwise. Okay. Well, uh, I'm uh, uh, going to call my presentation uh, to an end. Uh, I call the attention of uh, each and every one of you to uh, catch up, if you haven't, uh, your assignments uh, for, uh, uh, in some cases, week 10, uh, week 11, uh, and, and definitely for week 12, your assignment uh, uh, for the uh, O'Malley book. Uh, and uh, get to work on the assignments uh, for this week. Um, next week, my lecture will be focused uh, uh, solely on the uh, uh, Northern Ireland uh, government, its inception, its policies, uh, prior to the outbreak of uh, the Troubles in 1968 and 69 uh, and the settlement, uh, the conclusion more or less of those Troubles with the Good uh, Friday uh, Agreement of uh, 19, uh, uh, 1998. Okay, um, uh, I bid you uh, adieu uh, please uh, take care, uh, observe the requirements of, uh, uh, of uh, restriction uh, to combat the, uh, uh, the virus, uh, and uh, we live in hope. Uh, that's the motto of the state of, uh, and the uh, insignia of the state of Rhode Island, uh, and uh, and it's one of my own, you know, religious uh, guideposts as we uh, uh, move ahead uh, and the future uh, unfolds, however challenging it might be. God bless. We see you. We will see you a week next. Thank you.